Hey yo, this is Dash, and today I'm hoping to finish this thing up. Hey yo, this is Dash. Yeah! yeah. All right, so as you can see, I'm a, uh, I'm dressed for the cooler weather. You know, baklava on, and hoodie, thick hoodie, insulated hoodie, and uh, we have this thing here. So, today, what I'm trying to do, what I'm gonna do, is I wanna finish this up. So now, let me just kinda bring you back up to speed. So, the first thing I did was cut the top off. Unfortunately, I lost the footage for that. The next thing I did was I cleaned up and sanded the uh, sides off and uh, got the paint removed. Then I drilled a hole to uh, accept. This is a this is called a street elbow. What it is? This is a one inch street elbow. So. This opening here is one inch and then it goes into a direct, um, directly into the drum. I used to use like a 90 with a, a pipe, a piece of a pipe nipple, like a three inch pipe nipple, but then I found this. Then I went ahead and drilled the holes for the standoffs, the bolts for the, for the racks. These are like two inch bolts, maybe two, two and a half. And uh, the, someone asked me to where these are. You can see this is on the, on the, I drilled a hole on the top of the, here. this one is on the top ring. This is like a, a structure ring. And then this one, this one is drilled three inches from the bottom here. And then when the dome goes on, there'll be plenty of room for you to be able to put like briskets or turkey or, pork shoulder, anything like that, that'd be rather tall, okay? Then also, we have a hole drilled for the thermometer. And last but not least, what I'm going to do is to get the, I have to drill another hole, one other hole in the drum, uh, inlet hole, and then I'm gonna get the pipe affixed to the drum here. At this point, time to watch me work. Okay, so if you guys saw, I uh, <laughs> I got the intake pipe put on. Now, on the end of the intake pipe, what I end up doing is putting a uh, check valve. Gosh, bug flying around. Uh, but, so I went to, I cleaned everything off of the drum. I cleaned the drum up, wiped it down, get some of the residual paint uh, dust off of it. And I look for high temperature paint and I don't seem to have any. Which means I need to go out and get some. So I was about to head out and go get some, but then I said, you know what, maybe I'll go ahead and I will do the, I will weld together the charcoal basket first. So I think we're gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything um, 
I guess cut out, measured, cut, whatever. I'm gonna get everything set up so that I can go ahead and get to the point where I can weld together the charcoal basket. So bear with me. <laughs> So, where we just left off, I was having a hard time getting the welder to work. And then that happened. So, yeah, I ended up having to go and get a new welder. Leave all your Harbor Freight comments and, have, you know, whatever you need to say down below, I'm just gonna ignore it. You know why? Because the welder I have, it worked for like Shoot, that welder worked for four years. And uh, I went to Harbor Freight, I kind of pleaded my case and I said, hey look, um, the welder still works, the motor still works. I said, but it almost caught on fire. Let me show you this. So this happened. And after I got that last weld, I don't know, it seemed like the wire just was deteriorating, deteriorating, deteriorating to the point where it just it wouldn't carry current. So I tried and tried and tried. You guys saw me trying uh, in the in the time lapse there to get it to, to weld and it just wouldn't work. So then I kind of was like, all right, well, if it's not the if it's not the ground and it's the handle, let me trace the wires back. I traced the wires back and lo and behold, the it was just disintegrated. Anyway, so I've got to spend a couple minutes getting this new welder set up. I'm gonna get the new welder set up and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue on, <laughs> goodness, continue on getting this uh, taken care of. You know, it's, it's always one of those things where nothing happens until something happens. Yeah, all right, I'll get back at it.
Okay, so you saw me get the welder set up and you hear it on. So hopefully it works right out of the box and I don't have to do anything else. Obviously I had to get the um, electrodes set up properly. I had to put the wire in. So you guys saw all of that at this point. Time to get working. We're back to work. So next step in the process done, we have the charcoal basket taken care of. And you guys saw me, I kind of played with how the orientation was gonna go on this. But you know, in the end, this was the best side. And not that this is the worst side, but the, the whole thing is the expanded because I don't have like a, a break to bend it cleanly. You guys saw me struggling with that too. Um, and actually, I tried to use the raised expanded and the, the it was just way stronger than the regular expanded or the flat expanded. So again, this is the flat expanded. You see how it, it is just flat. And then over here, this is raised expanded. And it's kind of difficult to see, but you see how it's kind of at an angle? Okay, those angles make it stronger. Note to self, uh, I learned something today. But <clears throat> we are done here, and this is actually probably higher than I've done. The charcoal basket is, is higher than I've done on a lot of the other ones that I've, that I've done. Usually down at the bottom, I'll do like a two inch standoff, okay? Well, this one I did a three inch standoff. And from here to here, and I think it might have been 14 inches. Let me get a tape measure. Yep, it, it ended up being closer to 15 inches. So this thing sits off of, you know, basically 18 inches. There we go. It sits up 18 inches. Now, if we go down to the drum here, uh, if we're looking, actually shoot. Uh, all right, so if we're looking here, the 18 inches from the bottom, you see we have five inches from the, uh, from the grate there. And in between, there will be a water pan so now mind you that's 18 inches from the top of the basket the top of the basket shouldn't i mean you, you shouldn't have to fill this all the way up I, I put a bigger basket in here this time usually i do them about 12 inches or so and then the standoffs again are usually about two inches i don't know why i just did this one a little higher um, just kind of went with it um anyway 
At this point, the last thing that has to be done, well, the, the two last steps. The, the first thing is we're gonna have to build the dome for the lid. So let's do that. All right, so the dome for the lid See the box there, and all right, so, hmm. One last thing to do. Obviously, we gotta paint it. So, let's get that done. <sighs> okay, finally. All right, so I had to run and get some paint. So this is what I ended up coming back with. Ran out to Walmart, this was like six bucks a can. And I have the drum up on a trash can just so I'm not bent over and I can have a line of sight view while I paint this. Now, I guess at this point, I'm really just gonna go ahead and get started, though I'm gonna start the GoPro and I think, <clears throat> since you guys enjoyed it so much the other day when I was live streaming, I think I'm gonna do another live stream while I paint. So I'll paint a coat, talk to you guys, paint another coat, talk to you guys, and we can pretty much go from there. So I'll do like, well, we'll see what it looks like once I get the painting. All right, guys, so you saw me get the first can and I, I won't say coat, but it was a whole can of paint on the drum. So at this point, I think I'm going to, cause this is not mine and I, I really want it to look really, really nice and say hi to you guys on the, guys on the live stream, you wanna say hi to yourselves? So let's see, Benji says hello. Legion says hi. All right. So, the whole thing was, we were watching paint dry, literally, and I figured I would just pull out the camera, or pull out the phone, and get the live stream set up. Let's see. Oh, Rich says hi. Chuck says hi. Oh, Eric Gomez says hi. <laughs> you ain't ready, says we look good. Manny, uh, oh boy. Manny's talking football, and Torgi says hi. So look. I'm gonna go ahead and get a second coat uh, or a second can probably of paint on the drum. I want it to look extra special for Tom. So let's get that done. Six hours later. All right, so the smoker is done. We have all of the parts and pieces here. And I kind of just wanted to wrap everything up and then show you guys, explain to you guys how this whole thing works. So first and foremost, we have the most important thing, which is the charcoal basket. This charcoal basket, you can see the standoffs down at the bottom, those are three inches. And I ended up doing the top part of the basket. It is actually 15 inches high. So this whole thing is 18 inches high, which is, Probably the biggest I've ever made one, but it's fine. Now, what you do from that, from then is, this is the grill grate, or the charcoal grate, that came with the grill that I cannibalized for the dome lid, All right? This goes on next. This goes right on top of the charcoal basket. And then once you put the charcoal basket down and in or and the grate, this is a water pan. This will hold a gallon of water or apple juice or apple cider, whatever it is. You put that down and then that becomes your diverter plate. Okay? Then the next one is this is the grill grate from the grill that we cannibalized. 
That goes down. Minus the leaf. That goes down. And then, last but not least, we have our, this is a, a Weber grill grate. Wow. A Weber grill grate goes on top of that. And then, there you have it. So, I've had people ask where the grates, what, what heights they're at. The lower grate is at the top uh, structure ring. The top grate is three inches down from the top. And then, we have room for our dome lid. And it goes on just like this. So then there you have it. You can put, the charcoal basket does not have to be filled to the top, but what you do is you put your charcoal in, you, a layer of charcoal, uh, three or four chunks of wood, whatever type of wood you're smoking, uh, another layer of charcoal, maybe another three or four uh, chunks of wood, and a final layer of charcoal, and another three or four chunks of wood. And then you get your charcoal chimney, get your chimney lit. Once you light your chimney, pour it down inside of the drum, put the water pan on and that charcoal rack, the water pan on, your lower grate if you're cooking with something low uh, in the smoker. If not, then you're just gonna use the top and uh, that's it. Adjust your heat here. It, it is, it's crazy how much. Now this, this drum has a, it is a one and a quarter inch hole on the, on the one side. And then we have a one inch um, check valve or ball valve here that you can use for a finite temperature control. But this thing will go 12 to 18 hours depending on how much charcoal you put in there if not longer when it's warm. When it's colder, it's gonna take a little bit more for it to come up to temperature and stay at temperature because of the thin wall of the drum itself. It will, uh, the heat plays a role. Or excuse me, the uh, cold plays a role in taking some of the, wicking some of the heat out. But if you were to get one of these or, or use one of these, it's easy to figure out. It's very easy to figure out. All right, so there you have it. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. I greatly appreciate all of the help and uh, you know support you guys have given me over the past few weeks while I was building this drum. So Tom, thank you very much again for entering into the contest. I'm gonna bundle up a bit, it's a little chilly. Thank you very much for entering in the contest and I'm glad to see this going to someone who actually uh, participates in the comments and, and is part of the dialogue part of the conversation on this channel so I'm gonna end it here thank you very much if you have any other questions about the steel drum smoker build or how to build it or, or any other questions in general please feel free to leave those down below thank you again as always for watching if you haven't already please do subscribe if you like what you saw today if you learned something please leave me a thumbs up down below Make sure to turn the notification bell on so you can be notified when these videos go live. And again, as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.